Hello, I'm Kevin Benedict here at the CIO Water Cooler Live in London at the Merchant's Taylor. And I'm excited to be here with the founders of the CIO Water Cooler, Dan and Andrew. Talk to us about what the purpose of creating the CIO Water Cooler is and this event in particular. The fundamental belief behind the whole of the CIO Water Cooler is that um, you know, we know that CIOs, IT leaders, need to have a solid community of advisors, um, evangelists that they can rely on to make sure that they are able to tell the business um, technology stories. So you know, they are going to be the technology storytellers within those organizations and they need to be able to get advice from that community. So that's what really was all about the CI Water Cooler, building that community of people so they can talk about their own stories, share each other's knowledge and, and provide peer guidance. So when you're talking to this community this year in 2018, what are some of the kind of the key trends you guys are uncovering through your research? There's clearly lots of technology changes. So, you know, everyone is interested in machine learning. Um, to a lesser extent, automation. Um, they're kind of trying to find relevance to their own businesses on that. Uh, but certainly AI, machine learning is, is where their knowledge growth is coming from. Uh, but they also see that um, what's really important is getting the business ready to be in constant change, to be that digital business. Um, and it's preparing those businesses from a technology standpoint uh, to be able to cope with that change. So you have a vibrant, packed house today, but what kinds of initiatives are you guys looking to do in the future? Well, I mean, look, if we look at the, the last 12 months alone, um, they've been quite exciting already. So the, the website traffic is up 300%. Mm. Um, we've signed a global uh, strategic uh, partnership with Bloor Research for, to enhance our research capabilities. Um, we've acquired itdirector.com, so it's another IT leadership community. So that's to enhance the numbers of the community numbers. Um, and also, uh, we've launched the, the live events format, which has been very successful so far. So if the, the next 12 months or anything to go by, it, it's all good. So we've got things like uh, we're going to be investing heavily in the platform itself to improve the user experience. Uh, we're going to be expanding our partnerships initiatives. So we're looking at bringing on partners around in, interim practice and contract management um, in around mentoring schemes. Um, and also, we're also looking at a, an award ceremony. Um, and, you know, that plays into us all expanding the water cooler both uh, domestically and regionally uh, and also internationally. We've got a whole host of uh, uh, data points uh, and, and content being consumed yeah. in North America and it actually relates to about 30% of our, of our traffic come from North America and it's wow. organic traffic. Yeah. So it's, it, the, I think the next 12 months, particularly the end of that, will see us move into, into the States. If you think back on your time at Microsoft, what were some of the biggest, very biggest challenges in trying to digitally transform and accomplish your objectives? I, so I think the biggest part of it was actually bringing the people on and getting the culture set mm. to help us go faster, redefining how we think of success so that we could empower people to go for a, a clear vision. Um, working in a, in a modern way, agile and all that, yeah. and then just finding ways to get the friction out so that we can go faster. So in a nutshell here, what would be some of the key lessons you learned from that experience? Well, for, for culture, it's being purposeful about setting the experience. Mm. I learned this from Satya and, and had to do with, same thing with my team, being purposeful about the culture and what we wanted the culture to be like and what we needed to unlearn from, from our past and then modeling that. Satya was the, the best at, at being an example for it, but we all need to do that with our own teams and, and with our peers. You're in the area that's changing very fast. Yeah. You're doing analytics, you're doing audience metrics. Talk to us about some of the challenges of keeping up with that change. Yeah. It's a huge challenge. Um, we're in an industry that is essentially being disrupted by technology. Mm -hmm. um, and part of our biggest challenge is pace, uh, talent, and making sure that we're learning as quickly as the industry is changing and able to redeploy our teams as we need to. 
and also keeping the lights on. So making sure that everything is working to maintain our current business whilst we build the next generation. So they're some of our core challenges. The other one I would say is really around agile working mm -hmm. and that is a mindset shift, not only just in the engineering teams or development teams, but also across the business. So it's, it's how do we make sure we create that value to market as quickly as possible and move along the digital landscape. A lot of my LND is coming these days from peer-to-peer -peer sharing and networking. Um, I get a lot of my learning from that, which is great. And one of the places I go for that is the water cooler, and I find the best are there, so I, I get a lot of my learning there today.